Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to share with you guys today. Today we're going to be building up a brand new kit from TACOM, the 116th scale Type 94. Now, the Type 94 is a Japanese tank normally, and uh, TACOM's actually released uh, a Type 94 already in the past, but this is a, a new version of it where they've it's basically the Japanese tank, but now it's in Chinese markings, and they give you a very nice resin figure that comes inside this in 16 scale. So this is a limited edition kit uh, with that resin figure inside there. And I've been doing quite a bit of 16 scale, as you guys know. We did the uh, the Panzer I from Tacom, and then the M5A1 from Classy Hobby in 16 scale. And this is another great one to go along. It's a not a very difficult kit, not a lot of parts, no interior, so we can build up just a really nice example of a Type 94 and put it in the row with all of our other 16 scale kits because I know there's more and more of those coming out and I'm having a lot of fun doing 16 scales because they're fun to weather and detail and paint up, things like that. So, very excited about this. It's a very tiny tank. In fact, this tank is probably about the size of a King Tiger in 35th scale. So as you can see, the guy sitting on top of it right here, it's, it's definitely a tankette. So. But it should be fun to put together. It's got working suspension inside of it and rubber band tracks to go along with that. So it shouldn't be a very difficult build at all. So let's get started. Okay, let's start the uh, the build off and we'll first take a look at the the hull. As you can see, it is a bathtub style hull. So the sides and all that are all molded together. And I started glue, um, cleaning up a lot of the parts to make up the lower suspension. And just quickly, I'll show you how a lot of it goes together. The rubber portion is a separate piece and it would be nice if you could paint this separately, but the way the suspension goes together, there's no way to put them together once you get them on. So we're gonna go ahead and glue all these together. They actually snap into place. Probably run a little bit of bead of glue around there and, uh, just to make sure. So that is how that'll go together. And then there are some slide molded pieces here too, especially like this little spring that you build these little portions up of it which I'll show all this going together, but I built one up to kind of test it. And it looks like the whole suspension is going to work once you get it on. So let me finish up cleaning up a few more of these parts and then I'll show you how all of it goes on to the lower hull. I have assembled one side of the suspension and as you can see right here, everything actually works and goes together pretty easily. So you have a full working suspension with that plastic spring in there. And of course the uh, drive sprocket and the other drive sprocket both spin here. <laughs> I know this is probably the idler that's just got teeth on it, but it's a, it's a very interesting way they put this together. So let me show you how it goes together right now. Okay, let's show you how this goes together. It starts off with this really cool slide molded spring. So as you can see, it's a real spring once you put it together, or actually once you put both sides, it's a real spring even if you don't. And then we have both sides of the mechanism just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this in here. This just clips in here, so this is movable. This clips in here, so this is movable. And with that, we get to put these pin in here. And this pin right in here. And that has the, the basis of the uh, suspension system, as you can see.
And now we can attach a couple of the little side accessory pieces on here and also attach the rear of the tank. And the body is slightly bowed in just a little bit right here, which is, it's very, very minor, but it actually works out to the advantage here because it actually squeezes the, the parts together there. And there are a couple of little holes you need to drill through and a few little parts you need to actually remove from the hull on this particular version. And the suspension straight. Okay, now we're going to put some of the accessories on, which we've already started doing. We built up this uh, fender piece in the back here, made out of some leaf springs. And we've also assembled the parts that make up the, the fenders. And with that being said, we can go ahead and glue those into place. And they have a very precise fit. And we still should be able to get the tracks on since they're rubber bands with the trap with the excuse me with the fenders in place. So that shouldn't be much of a problem. So we'll go ahead and glue those into place just like this. And on this side, we have the side with the muffler, which it'll mate into the side here. And then there's a box that covers all this up. And I also wanted to show you this. There also is a big piece of photo etch that uh, I've just clamped together here because they give you a form that we will go ahead and we'll be able to wrap this around here and get the general shape that we need to cover up the fit, the, uh, the muffler right here once we glue that into place. And hopefully this should work pretty tight that we'll be able to use it just the way it is. And also the only other thing we need to do, there are two other little parts here. We've got the, the door assembly, which just has a little hinge on the back, or excuse me, a little handle on the back. And what appears to be a light and possibly a license plate. I'm, I'm not positive on this. I have to look a little further, but it looks like a license plate and that's gonna get glued in here. So you see the basic parts that we're gonna go ahead and put on. It's gonna be a lot easier without the camera in the way to get all these because there's a lot of little pins to line up as we go down the line. But I'll, I'll get ahead and get all of this stuff glued into place and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I was going to just move ahead and just kind of show you how the top and all the hatches go on. But one thing I do have to talk to you about is, uh, remember earlier we talked about that the uh, the pieces are kind of like tight to get the top on here. Well, what happened is once we put the, the fenders into place, it kind of made it tighter and a little bit harder to uh, to get to flex. Now, it still does, and I was able to get it on, but it also in the middle of trying to put another part on, popped out when I was dry fitting it and it fired and broke a few pieces off, but we were able to put those back on. So what I would might recommend, since I've already, you know, glued my fenders on, you can see we, how you can get it in like that. It's not too much work, but it's very tight uh, with the fender. So when you do it, you might be better off putting this piece on and then gluing the fenders on. It might make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this in into place and then we have all the, the hatches and pieces like that that we will just pop on. But I'll show you that in kind of fast motion. But I didn't want to make you guys aware of when you go ahead and put the, uh, the top panel on.
So we have all of the parts on the uh, the body, and now we can work on the turret. And the turret is a grand total of two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, about fifteen pieces, because there's two little hinges that we can we need to put on there as well. So as we can probably easily say uh, this is gonna be pretty simple to put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this up. Uh, we also have our machine gun that we will put inside of it as well, as you can see right there. So I'll get all this built up and then we'll pop it on and then we can start painting. And here we are, here is our principal construction done on this now. Uh, there are a few little tools and little pieces like that on it. I'm gonna go over it one more time just to make sure there's no more flaws, but I think we've gone over and sanded. That's where you can see some of these marks right here. They're all smooth, they just have a discoloration of the plastic. Now that we have the, uh, the kit complete, the instructions call out NATO green to be the closest color for this vehicle. So we're gonna be using the mission models NATO green. Uh, but first we're going to put our black and white coat over on that because we really want to give it a two-tone faded appearance as it's something that's been used for quite a bit of time. I should also point out too, the tracks in this kit are rubber bands, as you can see right here, and we've glued those together. They are the type of rubber bands too that use regular model cement, so to me a cement worked fine on these. And as you can see, these are some tiny tracks, even in 16 scale. Uh, to build these up in 35th, man, that would be a nightmare if they were individual tracks. So. Even in this scale, I'm very happy that they included the rubber bands because the uh, they fit on nice and tight. We've left the uh, drive sprockets loose so we can pull those off to get the uh, the piece back, the uh, tracks back on. So we will be set to go. So let's go ahead and do our black and white paint job, and then we will spray it with the NATO green. And here is what the uh, the paint job looks like after we've let it dry. So, but basically what we did is we took the Mission Model Paints NATO Green and put a bunch of light coats on it there. And hopefully you can still see like an, a faded appearance because it's very visible in person right here. And then the other thing I did afterward, and that was after talking to the people at Mission Model Paints, they told me to try this out. So I took uh, a different color. In this case, I took khaki brown and thinned it way, way, way down, probably like uh, 20, 25 to one, and just did a light mist coat over the entire thing. And in person, it, it's got kind of like a filter effect where it created a little bit of like a brown, brownish tone in some areas on the green. So really, really like the way it looks in person here. Now we've got to go back. I started touching up the wheels, you know, put the rubber back on, but we're going to do that in a minute there. So I'm going to spray the entire thing with a uh, dull coat to seal our paint job in uh, now that I like the way it's turned out and then we can start weathering on it. Okay, we're going to do a little light chipping now and we can use our chipping color that we mix up on a foam brush blotting most of it off. We're just going to do a little light chipping on some of the areas you'd imagine things getting dragged on. 
around some of the edges around the top here. And actually I'll show you that uh, chipping color that I'm using, how I mix it up right now in the bottom corner. Okay, what I'm using now is a little RAF interior green and we're putting some lighter scratches on and some rub marks that didn't go all the way through the paint to show that off. And we're also going to be covering up a little bit of the, the chipping color we have too. And you can see we started to do a little bit of it here and there. And very, very fine amount. So it's going to take a little bit of time to do all this, but it adds a nice effect to it uh, to create scratches that, like I said, didn't go all the way through the paint and just created some rub marks. And this lighter green looks like an oxidized rub mark on a uh, on this NATO color, green color. Let me put a few more of those little rub marks here. And like on this one here, I made this one kind of thick. I'll probably go back over with this. And in fact, I can do it right now. Kind of create a few little chips that went all the way through. Kind of break that line up a little bit. Okay, we're going to do some grime and some rust now on here. And what I'm implying right now is just some clean mineral spirits, odorless ones, because of the Emil by MIG products that we're going to use are uh, enamel based. Let's make sure we have it all on there. And we're going to use a couple of varieties of rusts and grimes. And we're first going to start off with a little bit of the grime. Just put a little bit in certain areas here that we're going to eventually streak down. And looks like a lot is going on right now, and there is a lot going on, but we're going to be removing part of it in very few seconds. And then using our big Y brush for these top areas, we're going to stipple it. Just 
you can see how it starts to spread it out thin it out some of its ending up back on the brush again and then going back into the thinner and then from these areas here and like I said we're gonna about four different colors we're gonna use some different colors of streaking rust Trying a new way of doing it with the camera so you get a better view of it. It's just very hard for me to see it with the camera so close to it right here. But you get a general idea of what I'm talking about. So we're going to keep mixing different colors. Doing the same effect. Just going over there and blotting it on. And between the grime and the rust colors really will add up to a nice beat up weathered vehicle especially over all of the uh, the chipping and weathering we've already done and we definitely want to take advantage of these big surfaces right here hopefully I can show you one of these here so we want to streak it a little bit here Also going to add some bright new rust on here as well. Just very, very lightly on that because that stuff's pretty strong. Put it on like that and then just blot it in and let it blend out naturally so it becomes much more subtle. And here is what it looks like with all the weathering done on it. Now what I'm going to do, this is dried overnight, but I'm taking a brush with just a little bit of thinner on it. In any of these spots, like this one right here, I think there's a little bit too much panel liner around it. So we're just going to lightly, with a little thinner on it, just take that down a bit. And go over most of the model too. I started doing that. There was a few stains that I thought were a little too too strong so we, we're knocking it down as you can see too the uh, the the muffler is drying in a way we put extra of the powder on it so it gives it kind of that that dry flaky rusty look to it and we've got multiple tones on there that are coming out I just put a little bit more on this area that's why it's this is still a little bit shiny here but once I get this thing entirely done the way I like it you know, knocking down some of the stains like in some of these areas right here that are a little too much, I think. We're going to shoot the entire thing with the uh, Ammo by MIG uh, Lucky Varnish Ultra Matte. Really, really like this stuff now as a final coat. What it'll do is it'll level out all of the streaking and stuff and make everything kind of a uniform uh, tone so there's not so harsh of a change on it there. So. Uh, definitely, if you haven't tried this stuff, definitely give it a shot. It's very, very good stuff. So I'll spend a few more minutes, do that. We'll shoot it with the uh, the Lucky Varnish. The other nice thing about Lucky Varnish is it dries so, so quickly, too. And it's ready to airbrush right out of the bottle there. So we'll go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll come back and show you the final reveal. And here we are, guys. Here is our completed model. Now, we've gone over the entire thing in the Ultra Flat, like I was talking to you about earlier. And I think that's kind of blended everything really well together. Uh, we've also gone ahead and glued the tracks down. And one thing I got to point out to you too is when you pick up the vehicle, because the suspension is uh, you know workable on this, when you put it back down, you do have to give the model a, a little tap and to get all of the wheels and stuff to hit the ground properly, just because it doesn't weigh as much as a real tank. So, uh, but the suspension working is a cool feature on that. Like I said, we did glue the top of the track down give it a little touch of sag. Uh, everything I saw online, it didn't seem to be sagging very much, so we didn't go crazy with the sag on it. Uh, overall, the kit was, was great. Uh, having the rubber band track, especially in such a small one, were a nice feature on this. I know the earlier editions had individual tracks, so if you're gonna build the, you know, the regular Japanese style, 
type, it will have the individual tracks in it. Now, you also might point out too, uh, how come you didn't put the decals on it? And there were two star decals, but what I was kind of going for with this one was one that was just freshly captured and something that had seen quite a bit and they just haven't decaled it up or anything yet. Uh, it's just two big red stars on the side. And I have another little special uh, thing for you. As you can see the vehicle right here, we built it up, but I have a friend of mine who is a very good figure painter and he offered up to paint the, uh, the Chinese figure that is gonna be inside here. So what I'll do is I will show you that right now, what it looks like on top of the vehicle. So I want to thank you guys for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.